Today we're going to demonstrate the correct way to time the camshaft to the crankshaft on an H2 engine. Before we put the camshafts in, we want to verify that we have the correct one for the front cylinder and the correct one for the rear cylinder. The 313 is for the front cylinder, the 314 is for the rear cylinder. The part numbers are marked right here on this edge. The first thing we need to do is to verify that we're at top dead center on the front cylinder. We'll do that by looking through the inspection hole in the magneto cover, finding the F mark. Now that we know that that is on the top dead center on the front cylinder, we can also take a screwdriver or uh, awl or something, put it in the spark plug hole, and you'll be able to touch the top of the piston, making sure that you know you're on top dead center. I'm now going to turn the engine so I can install the front camshaft. I would first put a little bit of lube on the cam journals. I'm now going to install the front camshaft. I'm going to stick it in through the chain, put our cam sprocket on it, and be sure that this recess side is towards the camshaft. And I'm going to position the camshaft so the lobes are in the down position towards the cylinder head, and that it the lines on the end of the camshaft here, you see, are lined up parallel with the top of the head. Next, I'm going to rotate my cam sprocket so it's in about the right position. Put the chain on, and then position it onto the cam, camshaft. As you can see, that it's not in the right position now, so I'd have to take the cam sprocket back off and rotate the chain on the cam sprocket and reinstall the cam again and then I know that I'm just off one tooth and beware of this pin can come out. Now you see that with pressure back because our tensioner is back here. I'm going to pull it tight on the front side and now our camshaft is perfectly aligned with the top of the cylinder head. Now we can go ahead and put in our cam bolts. We put a little bit of Loctite on the cap screw and we're going to put in the retaining plate so that it goes around over top of this locating pin so that it doesn't allow it to come out. Put that in finger tight and then I'm going to take a 17 millimeter wrench and I'm going to rotate the crankshaft till I can get access to the other bolt hole to install the other cap screw in the cam sprocket. Lining this up, I've locked tight on my cap screw and then we'll torque the cap screws to 10 foot pounds. I can now bend the lock tab over the cap screw. I'm now going to turn the engine over so I can get access to the other cap screw and torque it to 10 foot pounds as well. Then repeat the process and bend the lock tab up against the cap screw. Now we have to make sure that we're at top dead center again. We're going to verify that by looking back in our inspection hole on our magneto cover after we've aligned the camshaft parallel with the top of the head again. Now that we've verified we're back on top dead center, compression stroke because our lobes are down. We verified that through the magneto cover that we're on the F mark on the flywheel. We are now going to make sure that the surfaces on the top of the head here and on the cam cover are clean. So I'm just going to spray a little bit of contact cleaner on a rag and wipe these surfaces down. Once I have these clean, I'm then going to apply a little bit of sealant so I can put a thin layer 
of sealant on the cam cover. Spread that around so it's on evenly. And just make sure I've got sealant there. I'm going to just tap it a little bit so it pulls it up. So I know I didn't miss anything. Now before I install the cover, I'm going to install the seaming. And install the seal so the opening in here is down. Now before I install my cover, I'm going to look through these two holes here make sure that my rocker arm shafts haven't turned and it won't allow me to put the bolt through. I'm installing the cap screws. We use the long cap screws with the washers on and the four center ones. We take the two silver cap screws and they will be installed where the alignment dowels are. The two long shanked cap screws will go in over on either side of the camshaft on the end. The two short or cap screws go in the bottom left and the top right. Now we'll torque these to 10 foot pounds. We'll do that in a crisscross pattern, working from the center outward. Now that we have those torqued, we're going to now adjust the valves while we're at this point and then we can install our valve cover caps. Now as long as we're at this point, we're at top dead center compression stroke, we must well make sure our valves are adjusted correctly. So I'm going to put the special tool on. I've locked onto the jam nut. I've all locked onto the adjuster and I'll break the jam nut loose, turn the adjuster inward till we feel resistance. I feel the resistance there. Now I'll just line up the handle with one of these marks and I'll go one mark, two marks. Because what we want here is four thousandths on the intake for clearance. In between each of these marks is equivalent to two thousandths clearance. And hold it in that position, lock the jam nut. Repeat the process to the next valve, loosen it, make sure that it's loose on the adjuster, run the adjuster in until you feel a little, a little resistance, line up the handle with one mark, bring it out two marks, which is another four thousandths there, hold it in that position, lock the jam nut. Now that the intake is done, I'm going to do the exhaust side, get my wrench on, and loosen the jam nut, feel the Looseness in the adjuster, bring it in again till it feel resistance, line up the handle with a mark, and turn it two thousandths, four thousandths, six thousandths. Lock the jump up. Repeat that again for the second valve. Two, four, and six thousandths. Lock the jump up. So there we want 4 thousandths on the intake, 6 thousandths on the exhaust. Now I'm going to install the tappet covers. And I'll torque those to 10 foot pounds. 